All right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I have to start off with a huge apology. We had some technical difficulties on this end. And uh, I'm so sorry. I know I am like almost an hour behind schedule. But what do you expect when you have internet service that doesn't always work your way? And um, you have to try and work around it. So I have learned one thing if for sure when doing any type of social media work, you always have to be open to possible hitches, clicks, whatever in your um, in the work that you do. So I apologize. I am so happy to be here though. And I am glad. I hope some of you are still hung around and um, wanted to watch. So, um, oh, hi, Melanie. Hi. Oh, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> I am. Um, thank you, Melanie, for joining. And uh, so again, I am sorry about that. So in today's video, I will real quick get through some of this so you guys can uh, hear a little bit more, but not go too quick that you miss some of the wonderful things that are uh, you can obtain through my heritage DNA um, so down below before I forget are some links for you guys to click on and take a look I put the my heritage link down below so you guys can go visit their site and learn a little bit more about what you can um, learn from them and their DNA testing and all of the other wonderful things that they have so it's not just DNA testing there's a lot that you can um, you can learn through my heritage and their website. So my focus today is going to be strictly on the DNA results that I received. Hi, Marsha. How are you doing? Oh, Marsha, thanks for waiting for me. Marsha, it was me you had to wait for. I apologize because of uh, some technical difficulties, but I'm glad I have uh, some of you guys on here now to experience, go on this journey with me with my heritage. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who do not know, and I want to make it clear right now from the beginning, that this episode is completely sponsored by MyHeritage. And um, MyHeritage DNA, they, I received a kit from them a few months ago in the mail, really excited. And I then, the following day, collected my DNA sample, sent it in. And a few weeks ago, well, it was about a week ago, I got the results. Full disclosure, I did not give the results the second that I received them, only because I had quite a bit going on during that week, for those of you who might know that there was a lot going on that week, um, with my 12 days of research giveaway. There was a lot that was going on in that, so I didn't want to pull this, you know, my heritage DNA, the results. I wanted this to be my main focus that I had, because this is so exciting to find out more about your ancestors and find out a little bit more about, you can learn a little bit more about your family. So I put that off until now. I did take a little sneak peek because I couldn't wait. It's like Christmas. You want to cut that package open and look before everybody else does. So I did take a little peek and I will tell you there are a few surprises. Nothing extremely shocking, um, but there are some surprises in some of the numbers that I got. So what do you say we go on ahead and take a look and I am going to be doing something new. I am going to appear down here on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> and you're going to see what's on my computer. Um, so I'm going to share, try and share this all live with you. So this is a new technique. So you guys, please stick with me as I try and work through this. Okay, this was the email that I received from them. As you can see, I received it on the 10th. So it was some time ago. And it was an exciting email. They, I will say that my Heritage DNA has kept in touch with me through this whole process, and they do this with everyone who does any type of testing through them. Um, I received an email letting me know that they received the the, uh, my DNA sample. I received an email letting me know that everything's going through the process, and then I received this email letting me know that they are um, were ex that they were excited to let me know that my results were in. So when you get this, is exactly what you guys will be receiving when you send away for your. Um, my heritage DNA test and you're waiting for your results this is the same thing that you're going to receive you simply click on here and wait for the excitement because I'll tell you now this is so exciting um, and I need to alter the screen whoops here oh wait a minute I have one thing let's move this over here we go I want to Show you guys. Oh, so the globe is going. I can restart this. I do. Dang it. Here we go. So 
I will restart this for you guys because I want you guys to be able to see this. This is going to give me the option to restart it. But what comes up after you click that, you're going to have your globe, the earth turning, and it's kind of like you're part of a movie. It's the opening act. It's, you're, you're in this. And that's what's neat because it is all about you. It's about your DNA. Let me click the play again so you guys get the full effect. I'm sorry. I uh, There we go. We'll click the play again and see. There we go. Okay, so here it says, Angela, you are, and it's going to, here comes the earth, and it's going to spin, and it's going to give me my percentages. And I will say right now, looking at the 38% Irish Scottish, I wasn't too surprised. Scandinavian number was a little bit higher than what I had thought. Um, isn't this neat, though, you guys, all of you who are watching right now, watching the, the earth turn like this, and it just kind of dropped. You're watching it spin, and you're thinking, okay, where is it going to stop? Where is it going to stop? And bam, it stops right there. Italian, 4.5%. I had no idea of anything on the Italian. That one is a new one. Eastern European, that one is definitely new for me. Um, then it shows the three more ethnicities, and that was a 5.4%. So then you're taken to this page here. After you see your movie uh, start, then you're here, and you can take a look, a little closer look at what... Um, where all of these matches lie. Um, again, you have the 38, I have the 38%, 34, 17, 4.5, and 5.4. And I like over here on this map, this is really nice. And um, actually, their whole site is very user friendly. I like the idea of where it outlines it here and it color codes it to match what your matches are over here, what your percentages are. So, uh, and all of this is exactly like what you see on the globe that's spinning. This just brings you to a map that stands still for you to take a look at. Um, and here, you know, it's all of your information here. You have a button down here where you can click and play it again. And you have over here what's mini, oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Here we go, I'll move myself up a little bit. Over here on the bottom you have where you can come over here and click on the share down below. If you wanted to share this on Facebook, on Twitter, you have the option to do that right away if you wish to, do, if you choose to do so. I personally have not done it. I wanted to share it with you guys, let you guys take a look at it and go through this journey and excitement with me before I do that. Plus, there are a few questions that I have on research on my side. This answers some questions and this opens up some new possibilities for me. So before I share all of that, I wanted to, um, I'm going to do a little bit more digging on some of this. I'll explain that a little bit later. And then here you can go on ahead and you can vote your view, your full ethnicity estimate. And that is where we're going to go next. As soon as I get my mouse over here, here we go. And we're going to take a look. And then this takes you to your My Heritage DNA page that's titled directly for you once again, just like the other one, other one was. But this gives you additional options. So you can view the home page, see family events, a family tree, discover more about the matches that you have, see more in your DNA. I'm going to be focusing more on the DNA during some of this. And then additional research opportunities for you to research census records, birth certificates, death certificates, things of that sort that they have in their database. So, um, and I will say, I was asked the question if I have a family tree on my heritage. No, I don't. And that might be something that I will be looking at doing and developing that with you guys and sharing some of the excitement with you that goes along um, that whole process. So we'll see. I'm still thinking about that one. All right, so let's take a look here. You can... Uh, span out you can go in close and get a closer look uh, over here on this side all of the matches that I have that came through my percentages are over here on this key over here on the side and then again on the map I can run my mouse over the top of it highlight it and see what those percentages are you have the option which is this is a neat another neat tool that they have that I like because for instance I might not know a lot about Let's say, I definitely know, I don't know a lot about the Iberian matches that I had, which was a 1.6% here that fell down in uh, South Europe. This was another area that was a, definitely a surprise for me. This, um, so what I have the option to do is I can click on this, and then it's going to bring up some additional information about this particular region which I might not know about. So this might, this is going to give me a little bit more information about what I can find or what I can learn about my ancestors in that region. So I like the idea of being able to click over here on the map, 
highlight what it is and click on it. You also have the option to come over here and click what's over here and it will bring it the same piece of information up on that culture, on that region, in that area. So you have two options. You can hover over on the um, map. Let's see if it would take me. Oh no, where's it taking me? Oh gosh, it's taking me back to the beginning. <laughs> okay, don't click on the back arrow. I did that and I should not have done it. Oh, but good news is, look, there's a skip button. So I can skip it. I can go here and I'm back to where I wanted to be at. So you have the option to click over, hover over what you see here on the map or over here on the key that's over here on the side. And this does scroll up and down very easily for you on the side. Again, you can go back to play the intro, which I just accidentally clicked on by clicking the back arrow. You have the option to print or you can again share your information through social media, through Twitter and Facebook. You can exit to full screen if you wanted to take up your whole screen. But then if I did that, then my face would not be in the screen and I want to be in the screen so I can see you guys, see your comments that are going on over here at the side. Hey, Marcia, um, and see uh, what all is going on over there. Okay, so um, let's look over here on this. Right here you have, you have the option to, oops, I'm on the wrong, there we go. I have to go back and forth between screens, guys, I apologize. I have the option now to look at all of the supported ethnicities because if you remember, I had talked about, sorry, I am trying to find uh, my other screen. Here we go. Um, so if you remember, I had talked about that MyHeritage has over 42 ethnicity groups, which is larger than any other DNA vendor. So by clicking on that, I need to move this message over here to the side. There we go. Um, you're going to be able to see all of the areas that they support, uh, all of the groups that they, ethnicity groups that they cover. I apologize, not support. They kind of support. They're going to offer you the information. So here you can get a, a better view of all of them, and and you can hover over those also and see. And I believe you can even scroll in. So let's take a look. I know a lot of people are always hoping that they have some Native American found in their DNA. That is not something that I was expecting to see, so that does not surprise me that it's there. It's not there, um, and I'm fine with that. It break, So you can scroll in a little bit and see the different areas that it covers. So see here, you can find even some of the, the townships, the communities, um, townships, communities, cities, villages, and uh, see a little bit more information on those individual on those areas. Again, you scroll over and you see where there's zeros, so you know that there are no matches that are there. Again, all of mine are highlighted here in this purple. I can scroll over with my mouse and see where my matches are at, or I can come over here on the side, um, and then it'll highlight on the side like uh, Japanese. It'll highlight where this uh, area is at. Vietnamese, Chinese. So I like the idea that you, it doesn't just stop at what, you have the option to look at all of the regions and you have the option to learn about those regions. Remember I had talked about if you hover over it, you could click on it and find a little bit more about um, that region and that culture when you're doing the research and learning more about your family. But for instance, if I don't have anyone who, I know my count is gonna be zero, uh, my percentage match is going to be zero over here in China and Vietnamese, but I might want to learn a little bit more about it. Maybe I had an ancestor that traveled that way and stopped in there, and I can learn a little bit more about that culture. So that's a nice option, additional option that they have on here uh, to be able to take a broader look at that, which I really do like that. So right now, everything that I'm seeing so far with my heritage, I'm extremely happy with. I like everything that they have. I like how they have it laid out. I like how they present it. Um, it's easy to read, easy to follow. Uh, what do you guys think so far? Those of you who are watching right now, leave me some comments over here on the side and let me know what you guys think. And make sure that I want to make sure you guys can hear me okay also. So um, this takes a, a, I like the, like I said, I like the way that it looks. I like the way it's presented. 
it's very easy to follow and I said I was going to stay over here in this area here I'm not going to go in and click on the DNA matches and the reason I'm not doing that is because there is some private information on there so the DNA matches is going to give me information on those who I have a match with I do not have permission from those individuals and out of respect I am not going to click on that link and share that information uh, with you guys, I will tell you a quick overview of what it looks like. It's going to have my name up on there. It's going to have my percentages, which I can see those over by looking over here on the side, and you guys have the opportunity to see those on the side. It's going to show my European percentages, um, like you have here my North and West, you have my Eastern, and my uh, South Europe, and my Middle East, which still the Middle East is something that that was one of those also that was a shock for me to see that there. So recap those that were surprises. I shouldn't say shock because there's really no shock. It's just a surprise, but it's a, I look at it as a good surprise. It gives me something else to look at when I'm doing my research and can possibly answer some questions um, that I have in the research I'm doing. And again, I'll touch on that. I like leaving those cliffhangers there for you guys to think about. So, yes, the Middle Eastern was a, um, a new one for me. Uh, definitely on the uh, South European, that, whoops, where'd it go? On the Italian, did not know of any Italian. That has to be something that I would be looking at on my paternal side, not my maternal side. And the Iberian, that I find funny because a little back history, my grandparents, my maternal grandparents, always loved to go to Portugal and Spain that they that was something that they did quite often and they did with a group of other people they would go and I always thought that was weird why do you what is not that I'm saying anything is weird about Spain or Portugal it's just to me it was one of those things I thought why are they going there I guess you're thinking I was thinking why not go to Hawaii why not go to Florida why not go you know to Paris uh, why not go to Italy, which now I might have an idea of why I was thinking, why don't they go to Italy? But it was one of those things that always made you wonder. And now I have these results, and I just can't help but wonder in the back of my mind if maybe my grandparents knew something that I did not know. And as researchers, we are always telling everyone, um, make sure you ask those questions when you're doing those interviews. And how many times have we heard someone say, you know, my grandparents are gone, or my parents are gone, or my great grand, you know, aunts are gone. And I wish I would have thought to ask those questions. Well, here's a perfect example why. I wonder if they were going over there for a specific reason that had to do with family that I did not know about. Um, so that would be kind of interesting to find, about, find out more about while doing my research thanks to the results that I've received from my heritage, which, again, thank you, my heritage, for doing this and for sponsoring this episode and giving me the opportunity to take this journey and share this with all of the viewers who are watching. This is so much fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I love the way that this all presents. And I was touching up here on the, the uh, DNA matches. I'm not going to click on that, like I said, out of respect. But if when I'm done with this and I start looking a little bit more and I am in touch with someone who has a match over there, trust me, I may give the thumbs up and the approval, then I will be more than happy to share that information with you guys. But out of respect for them, I'm not going to do that, okay? Um, and I'm sure all of you completely understand and uh, respect that idea. Uh, manage your DNA kits. You just click on this. It gives you, if you have multiple kits that you send in, so you can on your uh, on your page you can have multiple kits like I have the DNA kit um, on this page for myself here I'll go ahead and click on this so you guys can see um, on myself and this is my kit that is assigned to me and then I also have if I wanted to do a DNA kit for my husband or for my if I wanted my mother to take a DNA kit I can have that all on here and I can go on ahead and access it and look at it and um, see what information is there. Saying that, I do want to make sure that you guys are aware that you can share this information with other family members. So you've got your DNA test up here. You want to share it with, like if I wanted to share this with my brothers, all I would have to do is go down here to invite family and I can invite family members to view what information it is that I have. And I'm assuming you can also do that through invite them to view not only the DNA results, but also the information that you have on your trees, which is superb. 
That's um, great because that's the whole idea is when you get your results, you want to share them um, with your family and you want to share those results. And then that gives you the opportunity to have that input from your family members to maybe add a little bit more information that you didn't know about. And it's so it, I think it would be so exciting for them to be able to see the whole, as I call it now, it's the movie reveal when you click on that button and you have the earth coming out spinning and then it drops those surprises as to where your percentage, where your DNA percentage links are at, which is, I, I, that was so neat. It makes you want to sit here and eat popcorn and watch it uh, spin around. So over here, real quick, I want to take a look. Oh, Melanie was saying, I am 4% Iberian Peninsula. Oh, Melanie, that's good. That's Congratulations. That would be interesting if we find out a connection that's there. Yeah, that was that one was definitely, um, that, was a, that was a new one for me. That one was not one that I was expecting. Um, I, 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 that was, that, yeah, that was one that I was not aware of. But again, I'm happy to get these results so I can find out more um, about my family and that information. Um, here you have surveys, and this is this is fun. And I know we're almost done, and I want to click on this real quick and show you guys one of the surveys that are over here. So you, you're finding out your DNA results. You have your percentages. You know a little bit more about your ancestors. You found out a little bit more on what the region was like and the culture was like for your ancestors. And so you have that research that you have those numbers. Well, what's neat about this on the MyHeritage and their surveys, you're also going to now have the opportunity to find out where you fit at and with the MyHeritage family or the MyHeritage community, however it is you wish to view it, and those who visit this site and frequent this page and um, search to find out more information about themselves. So it's kind of like you have your your biological, I guess you could say your biological family connection and surveys. And now you have another survey to where you can find out more about those who are on here. It's, it's a fun, um, I kind of look at it as like a fun a game, but it's like an educational game. That's the whole thing with this. Um, that's another thing I wanted to point out. With my heritage and getting my DNA results, I kind of look at it as a fun, informative, the, the it's the fun movie part of it is, again, with, I can't say it enough, the earth coming and spinning and giving you know, those results and that excitement. And then you see the map drop and you have the information there. There's that excitement. And then you have that informative educational tool that comes into play where you can find out more about those specific regions. And you can find out more about where your ancestors are at. Um, I, I like that. And then this is kind of like an added fun game to, to do on there. Um, I have Melanie who says that she will have to take on the MyHeritage. Oh, Melanie's going to go on ahead and take a look at the MyHeritage. Also, great job, Melanie. Do that. Um, there is a link down below, so you can go on and click on that link and find out more about MyHeritage and how to go on ahead and get your test so you can do your DNA testing and find out more. And when you guys do this, you guys are watching, um, shoot me some messages. Let me know. Keep us all up to date on what results you have found out and what your thoughts are. Because I have had a wonderful experience um, with my heritage in the whole process. So here, real quick, this is one of the tests, um, and let's do a short one, the sleep survey. Oh gosh, well we know that doesn't happen often, not if you're <laughs> doing family research. Um, do you ever lose sleep because of the temperature in the bottom, in the bedroom, or firmness of your mattress? Your sleep preference and patterns may be coded from birth. Insights from this survey will help understand connections between sleep preferences and genetics. Uh, so it's going to take an estimated two to four minutes. So let's see if we can go on ahead and go through this real quick. So you guys have an idea how this um, this is a fun little thing to do, which I, I think it's. And it plus there's a little it might answer some questions. You might find out it's not that far off that you have problems sleeping. It might be a genetic find in answering some of these questions, maybe. Uh, how many hours do you sleep in a 24-hour day, including naps? Uh, how many hours do I sleep in each 24-hour? Um, oh, I don't get enough sleep. Boy, this is really good. I hope my physician's not watching this to give any <laughs> any comments on you're not getting enough sleep. Uh, how easy is it for you to get up in the morning? Uh, it depends. 
Uh, I'm getting up, so I'll say somewhat easy. Uh, how much of the more, how much of a morning person are you? I am somewhat of a morning person. Uh, some, let's see, somewhat more of a night owl than a morning person. Um, not a total morning person. Somewhat more of a morning person than a night owl. I'm, I like the morning, but I actually like the night better. Uh, total night owl, no. I'm not sure. I guess I could click that one because I'm not completely sure. But I do know that I like um, the night. It's easier for me to function at night. Um, do you nap during the day? Uh, no, I don't. Ever since I left kindergarten, I no longer have that mat to lay on the floor and take a nap. Do you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? Uh, yeah, because your mind's always working. If you share your bed on a regular basis, does your partner complain about you snoring? Okay, those of you who have been to conferences with me and know me, that, yeah. Boy, this is giving out a lot of personal information I'm sharing with you guys right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I do snore. Uh, do you fall asleep during the day unintentionally? No, that never happens. Okay, so I finished my survey, and now it's going to spin, and we're going to see what the results are. I'm going to view my results. So, um, in the My Heritage Family Community, looking at the results, it looks like I am definitely on the 5%. I'm on the low side of that. Most people, it looks like average about 7 to 8 hours of sleep. Uh, let's see, how easy is it for you to get up in the morning? Uh, somewhat easy. Okay, well, I fall into that. That's good. Uh, how much of a morning person are you? Okay, I'm not the only one that's more of a night owl than I am a morning person. See, this is fun. This is something a little different to do. Um, do you nap during the day? Never. Sometimes people do nap during the day. I don't find myself napping during the day. Do you have trouble falling asleep and staying asleep? Some people fall into that category. Sometimes I... Uh, most of the nights. Uh, let's see if you share. Do you snore? Okay, fine. I am in the 11% that I do snore. Again, I can't believe I just shared that with you guys. At least it didn't ask for my weight. <laughs> um, do you fall asleep during the day unintentionally? No, no, whatever. Okay, so great. So that, I'll take you back to the survey. So that's kind of a fun thing to do on their site. So this is a quick. Um, look that I wanted to share with you guys so you could see what can be found on here. I'm going to click off of this. So yes, I got to put my mouse back over here. Okay, so yes, I was a little surprised by some of the numbers, but not, there were no big bombshells that were in there, no big shockers as far as my DNA results. Um, there are some areas that I'm going to definitely look at a little closer. And I want to see if um, it's going to be able to answer some questions that I have that have just recently developed. So just to give a little spotlight on this, and I hope later to be able to share more of this with you. Um, when doing your DNA and, or when doing your family research, we rely on documents. Sometimes, unfortunately, you're going to see one document say something and then you're going to have another one support it. Well, unfortunately, I threw some DNA uh, information uh, through sending that off to JEDCOM, which by the way, there is a link on the MyHeritage tab up above where you can send that off. And uh, I will touch a little bit more on JEDCOM at a later date. And um, I'm going to bring somebody in to help explain that a little bit more because they can explain it a little easier than I can. I might sound like a babbling idiot if I try and explain some of that, that whole process. <laughs> um, but in doing that, there is something new that I discovered that some information that was on documents might have been incorrect. And thanks to the DNA testing that I did, it's going, it has actually verified some, in, some, incorrect, uh, some incorrect information that was shared. So I am thankful, really thankful even more now that I have my uh, results from my heritage DNA. So now I will be able to look a little bit more into that and actually find uh, some clarification on who someone's uh, parents were in my um, in my family on my family tree because the branch that I was going on um, now does not look like the branch that I should have been going on uh, because of some I want to say forged information but it does look like that's what what I'm looking at on that um, 
Melanie says that she uses GEDCOM too. Good. And GEDCOM is something that, like I said, I don't want to make this video really long, uh, So, but just know that that is something if you guys haven't seen, you can go on and Google it and take a look at it and see because MyHeritage has that link up there to where it's great that they offer that link to where you can go on ahead and upload that to uh, GEDCOM. So again, MyHeritage, I am, thank you so, so much for uh, sponsoring this episode and helping me on this journey to learn more about my ancestors, my DNA, and I am, I, I don't want it to end here. I'm hoping that there is more to come with my heritage and more information I'll be able to share with you guys on my DNA results and maybe building my family tree and bringing some people on so I can interview them, talk to them about um, my heritage and how this, again, this company has been around for over 14 years. So it has been around for long, for some time and with over 42 ethnicity groups that is larger than any other DNA vendor, you know they have a lot to offer you when uh, when you take advantage of MyHeritage. Um, in case one of the big episodes I want to point out, if you guys missed it, you can go on. I'm sure that's still on the internet. Uh, My Heritage DNA played a big role on Good Morning America. They reunited a mom and a daughter. The mom's name I think was Angie or Angela, and the daughter's name was Melinda. It was a really heartwarming episode to watch. You can go watch it, have your tissues ready, um, because it is really it's it's a beautiful um, a beautiful thing. So you can see where not only using your DNA uh, through My Heritage to find out more about your ancestors, you can see where they've played. A role in um, in reuniting family members together and even some that didn't even know that they others existed with over 92 million users worldwide you know they have a lot there um, for you guys to be able to find out more about your family and do the research okay so again down below are all of the links to the my heritage DNA or the my heritage site there are links to my social media sites please guys leave me some comments let me know what you think if you have taken the DNA testing through MyHeritage, share it. Let me know. I'm curious, and I know a lot of my viewers are, are curious to see what your thoughts are, what your results were. Did you have anything that just like, ah, oh, a shock, or were you um, not that surprised and really happy with everything that, that matched up with the research that you have done? So, um, again, I'm happy with everything that I've gotten. I'm going to share some more information later. I don't, Like I said, I don't want this to stop. I want this to continue because I do like um, the way that my heritage started this from the beginning and they presented this all the way through. I really, really uh, enjoy it and I encourage all of you to take a look at their site. And I know that Melanie said she's going to go on and look at getting one of the kits. Uh, link is down below. And um, thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm glad that you guys were here to watch. And if you watch this as a later date, thank you for watching. Remember to throw me some thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Um, so that way I know that you like what I'm doing and I'll continue to do it. And remember to keep unlocking those family stories.